Maharaj Yudhisthira to hear that saint, a saintly, a saintly person, so like Jain Vijay, who are there at, at the spiritual world, who are guarding the entrance into the spiritual world, that they can be cursed and they can fall down to the material world. So it was surprising to Maharaj Yudhisthira. So Narada Muni was elaborating about this, that there was some purpose behind this cursing. Of course, the cursing was done by the four Kumaras in their anger, because Jain Vijayan had tried to stop the four Kumaras from entering into the, the kingdom of God. They thought, four Kumaras, the little boys, how can they be qualified to come into this kingdom of God? They should do, they should be scholars, they should do, they should have some special qualification. How could little children ever have qualification to enter into the kingdom of God? So Jain Vijay, thinking like this, they restricted the four Kumaras, and the four Kumaras uh, didn't appreciate it. They, they were angry at the Jain Vijay, and they cursed them that they should fall down to the material world and that they would have to take birth as demons for three births. So Narada Muni was narrating like this, that the first birth of Jai and Vijay was as the sons of Diti and Kashyap, when they became Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha. And so as Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha, then uh, they brought a lot of trouble to the whole universe, the two, these two brothers who were the, the epitome of demons, materialistic people, very proud and arrogant and angry, always in an angry mood. So they, Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha, brought great terror in the universe. The demigods were suffering greatly. And at one point, because Haranyaksha was going everywhere, drilling up the ground and excavating the earth, looking for gold, at one point the earth fell into the bottom of the universe. And this <coughs> led to uh, Lord Varaha appearing and picking up the earth from the bottom of the universe. And this led also to Haranyaksha challenging Lord Varaha. There was a, a, a when, Haranya, when Haranyaksha saw Lord Varaha, then he challenged him. Because Haranyaksha, in the typical, in the mood of the demon, was always looking for some battle. He always wanted to give trouble to others. And when he saw the appearance of Lord Bor, the Lord in his forms, Lord Varaha, he challenged Lord Varaha. And there was a great battle between the two. And ultimately, Haranyaksha was killed by Lord Varaha. So, with the death of his brother, Haranyakashipu became particularly hateful towards Lord Vishnu. Because he thought, this Lord Vishnu is partial. He favors the demigods. He, didn't, he wasn't fair to my brother. He killed my brother unfairly. And Harani Kashipu wanted to find Lord Vishnu to kill him. So Harani Kashipu, as a great demon, the epitome of a demon, he uh, wants to conquer over everyone and everything. And he particularly hates the demigods, because they seem to be favored by Lord Vishnu. And of course he has a really great hate towards Lord Vishnu. So Srimad Bhagavatam describes how Haranya Kashipu then went to perform some austerities in order to get more power. Although Haranya Kashipu is a demon, He's from the, the line of the demons, he's particularly inclined to do austerity. And he went to Mandanap Mountain and performed austerities, standing on his tiptoes with 
his arms raised over his head, he performed Greek austerities like this. He stood. Could you, could you just imagine standing on your tiptoes with your arms raised up in the air? And you have to stand like that without moving. How long could we do it? It would be very difficult. This was the kind of austerity Harani Kashipu was doing. And he was standing there so long that all the flesh and all the fat and all the blood on his body was eaten up by ants. His whole body became an ant hill. And there was nothing left but his bones. But still, the spiritual particle remained there within that skeleton frame. Although there was no fat and no flesh and blood, but still, Harani Kashipu, his little spiritual particle as an atma, remained there within the skeleton. And he did so much tapasya, like that he was doing it for so long, that fire began to come out of the top of his head. And the, the heat coming out from the top of his head began to affect the whole universe. And all the demigods were troubled because the heat was so great. Just like sometimes here in the Gulf, it can get very hot, right? What do you do? Run off to India or something. <laughs> It's very hot. So similarly, the demigods, when it got really hot due to the tapasya of Paranyakashipu, the demigods, they left the heavenly planets. They didn't know what to do. And they went to Lord Brahma and they asked Lord Brahma to help. And Lord Brahma, he went to see Haranyakashipu to see what could be done. Now, Haranyakashipu is not a devotee. We said he's a demon. So, the, what is the difference between the devotee and the demon? The difference is that the, the demons generally worship demigods. They don't like to worship the Supreme Lord. Rather, they want to get the blessings from demigods. And the blessings they often want are, you know, foolish and, and certainly centered around their own sense gratification. So Harani Kashipu, he saw Lord Brahma appear before him. Uh, Lord Brahma, first of all, rather, what happened was Lord Brahma came there and he came along with Bhrigu and other great sages and he brought with him his Kamandalu. And within his Kamandalu, he had very powerful sacred water. So he poured that water onto the skeleton frame of Ranyakashipu. And in this way, he was able to rejuvenate the whole body. Magical, as if by magic, his whole body again became restored, powerful, shining, golden, effulgent. He was given this body by the grace of Brahma. Of course, Harani Kashipu, he doesn't just simply want to get his body restored. He has more in mind than that. He wants to get other benedictions. This is a way of those who are materialistic, that they want to get blessings, benedictions, for their own sense gratification, for their own material pleasure. So Haranya Kashipu told Brahma, and Harani Kashipu, very, very, you know, as a demon, demons are often very intelligent. You know, you can see some of the, you know, different nations, sometimes they're very demoniac, some of the governments, 
but they, you know, by their material intelligence, they create a great kingdom. Just like Ravan, long ago in the times of Lord Ram, Ravan had a very great, powerful kingdom. You know, he was a big demon, but he, he still organized a very powerful, very opulent, very well-managed kingdom. So this is the nature of demonic society. You can see many demonic places in the world, and they're very organized, they have a very but it's all centered around sense gratification. There's no Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, just like you give somebody a check, all zeros. <laughs> right? No, there's no, there's nothing. What do you get? You put it in the bank, nothing. You get nothing. It's all zeros. Oh, they're very well managed, it's zero. Oh, they're very advanced technology, another zero. Oh, they're very progressive, they're very, uh, they have very nice arrangements for everything, another zero. They have no aspect of spirituality, no spiritual education, no understanding of the higher goal of life than simply eating, and sleeping, and mating, and defending. This is animal life, working just for that, without any higher purpose in mind. So Harani Kashipu was like that, his nature, he wanted to get benedictions from Brahma, so he asked Lord Brahma, he told Lord Brahma, he didn't immediately tell Lord Brahma, I want to be immortal, because he knew Lord Brahma also is not immortal. So he thought, How, what can I do, what do I need to ask for in order to save myself from death? So he told Lord Brahma, he said, I don't want to be killed by any living entity coming from you. Everyone comes from Lord Brahma. He is the first living entity. So Lord Brahma had to agree, all right? You won't be killed by any living entity which comes from me. You want, I won't be, I should not be killed in the day or in the night. I should not be killed inside or outside. I should not be killed by any weapon made by man. I should not be, you know, in so many different conditions. And Lord Brahma, oh, all right, all right, he would give the, this benediction. So this, this is the nature, you see, of the demons, that they worship these different devas to get some material blessings. Just like in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, we can read about one devotee of Lord Shiva, Vrika, and how he worshipped Lord Shiva. And what was the benediction he wanted? He wanted that whosoever head I touch, their head will fall off. Whenever I place my hand on someone's head, their head should fall off. So Lord Shiva had to give him that blessing. And then immediately the demon wanted to touch Lord Shiva's head. Lord Shiva had to run it. It was left to Lord Vishnu to come, to come in disguise to trick the demon. Trick the demon. He said, oh, don't you believe Lord Shiva? He's been acting very funny. You try it yourself. Put your hand on your head. And when the demon put the hand on his hand on his head, his own head fell off. So that was the end of that curse. Anyway, Haranyakashipu, you see, he's, he wanted all of these benedictions just so that he could enjoy the material world. We don't, he did not recognize there's a higher purpose to life in this world. You cannot change the nature of this material world. This world is Mrityu Loka. 
the place of death. But Haranyakashipu was thinking, I will change it, I will not die. You see? So this is the demon, demonic nature. We have to recognize there, there, there's a controller behind this world. And the controller has arranged the different laws which govern this world. And one of the laws is whoever takes birth, they will die. Everyone takes birth, everyone has to die. Just as there's a law of karma. You do good, you will get good. You do bad, you get bad. And we get the results of our own work. Harani Kashipu wanted to change all that. People who do good, they should suffer. <laughs> And people who do ba bad, they should be rewarded. <laughs> this was how Aranyakashipu was thinking. He wanted to make things like that. He wanted to change everything, you see. So Lord Brahma had to give these benedictions to Aranyakashipu. And then Aranyakashipu began to tell her, he began to take advantage of over all the different Devas, all the different gods of them, all the demigods, they were all put under the control of Haranyakashipu because he was so powerful. He had all of these benedictions from Lord Brahma and the demigods couldn't oppose him. He was so powerful. Only Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva were not under his control. 33 million demigods, right? And they were all under his control. This was Haranyakashipu. The brahmanas could not offer sacrifices to Lord Vishnu. Haranyakashipu wouldn't let them. Because Haranyakashipu knew it. If there's no sacrifice to Vishnu, Vishnu will suffer. Vishnu will die, he will disappear, because Vishnu lives by the sacrifices offered by the brahmanas. And the whole earth was flourishing by the austerity of the brahmanas. Harani Kashipu wanted to stop that. He didn't want, he thought the earth should flourish without these brahmanas. We don't need this Varnasha, we don't need these brahmanas. The brahmana should worship me. <laughs> Om namo harani kashipu aya. <laughs> That's what he wanted them to chant. He wanted to change the whole situation. So the, the, whole, plant, the whole universe was in great trouble. The demigods were driven out. Indra had to give up being the king of heaven. Harani Kashipu occupied the throne of Indra and the demigods were left to wander because there was no one offering oblations anymore, there were no sacrifices anymore. The demigods, they, they went to appeal to the Lord that, what, can we do something, can we do something about this Harani Kashipu? So at that time, the Supreme Lord told the demigods that in the future, don't worry, that in the future, when this Harani Kashipu torments his own son, then at that time, I will appear and I will kill him. So the demigods heard that uh, the Lord himself is going to appear soon and take care of the adjust the situation, so the minds of the demigods were pacified. However, Maharaj Yudhisthira was shocked to hear how this Harani Kashipu could do so much harm and so much bad treatment to his own son. Because usually, you know, a father, well, he may punish his son sometimes, but generally, the father is the well-wisher of the son. But Maharaj Yudhisthira was hearing from Narada Muni how 
Aranyakashipu was doing terrible things to his son. And why, why was he doing these things to his son? What was wrong? Maharaj Yudhisthira was puzzled. So Narada Muni was describing the character of Prahlad. That Prahlad is a very saintly devotee. And from his very birth, he is a devotee. He is Nitya Siddha. He, Nitya Siddha means they always remember the Lord. Just like Narada Muni is Nitya Siddha, Prahlad also was, is Nitya Siddha. He, they, all, they cannot forget the Lord at any moment. So from his very birth, Prahlad was Krishna conscious. But at the same time, He's all, he also did sadhana, just like Narada Muni also did sadhana. Why did Narada Muni do sadhana? Why did Prahlad do? For the pastime, for the lila, that they're showing the example. So they're, they're mixed, they're both nitya siddha and sadhana siddha. So Prahlad Maharaj is such a great devotee that he is always remembering the Lord. His mind is always controlled. He has no material desires. Can you imagine a young boy? Usually young children, you know, they're very playful, they're very active. But Prahlad was not like the other children. The other children were you know, always running around, playing games and things. But Prahlad would just sit and meditate, remember the Lord. Prahlad is our example for the process of remembering the Lord. Smarana. Right? Sukadev Goswami chanted, Maharaj Parikshit heard, and Prahlad remembered. We may like to try to remember, but Srila Prabhupada tells us that before we can remember, first we have to hear, then you can remember. If you have not heard properly, we won't be able to remember. How, what, we don't have anything to remember because we never heard. So hearing is very important. We have to hear again and again. It's pointed out in the third canto in relation to Kapila Shiksha. It mentions that one should hear again and again the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to hear the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj, the glories of Prahlad Maharaj. He would hear again and again and again. He would hear about Prahlad and he would hear about Dhruva. And he would, usually he would hear from the mouth of Gadarna Pandit. Gadarna Pandit was his lifelong friend and Gadarna would recite Srimad Bhagavatam to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in this way Lord Chaitanya would pass his time when he was residing at Jagannath Puri regularly hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, particularly Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj. So Prahlad is teaching us how to remember the Lord. And one who remembers the Lord, then when we are constantly remembering Krishna, we don't think of Maya, right? If our mind is full of thoughts of Krishna, there could be no thought of Maya. Krishna Surya Sam Maya Haya Andika. Yahan Krishna Tahannahi Mayaya and Krishna is like the sun, Maya is like darkness. Wherever there is the sun of Krishna, there can be no darkness. So Prahlad Maharaj, because he's always remembering Krishna, there could be there was no Maya. 
There was, there was no thought of sense gratification. This mind was fully controlled. When we read in the Nectar of Instruction, Rupa Goswami begins his Nectar of Instruction talking about <coughs> controlling the urges, the Viga, Vacho Vigam, Manasa, Kroda Vigam, one who can tolerate the urge to speak. The mind's demands, the actions of anger and the urges of the tongue and the belly and the genital, then you're qualified to make, to do preaching, to make disciples like this. So, Arupa Goswami has given this instruction to us in relating to the process of devotional service, that we have to control these vegas. These urges, particularly the tongue, we like to eat, we like to speak. We often eat bad things and we often speak bad things, nonsense things. We have to conquer over these urges. Prahlad Maharaj, however, had already conquered these urges by from his very birth, he was God conscious. So, he was not an ordinary soul. You see, there are conditioned souls and liberated souls. Prahlad was a liberated soul. Even in this lifetime, one can become liberated. Prahlad Maharaj, we said, he was Nitya Siddha. We can also become Siddha by Sadhana. I said, Prahlad, Narada Muni also, they did Sadhana. We're also doing Sadhana. Regular practice of devotion based on hearing and chanting. By doing good Sadhana, we can also become Siddha. <coughs> will take some time. There's, there is also Kripa. One can become Kripa Siddha. That is very rare. To become, to become perfect by mercy. That is very, very rare. <coughs> Prab, a devotee asks Prabhupada, what does it mean Kripa Siddha? Prabhupada said, just like somebody comes and gives you $10,000 here, take it. Did it ever happen? Did you ever, did anybody ever come to you, give you ten thousand dollars? Not very common, right? Or you get, you get honorary, right? Did you get honorary degree from university? Not very common. Rabindranath Tagore, famous Indian author, he got degree from Oxford, honorary degree. They called him, come, we will honor you, we will give you degree. But did any of you get honorary degree? No, not very common. That's Kripa Siddha, you see. So Kripa Siddha, by mercy, someone can be liberated, one can be but Prahlad Maharaj, he is Nitya Siddha. He is always perfect, eternally perfect. So Prahlad Maharaj, because he is Nitya Siddha, he is perfect, his behavior is very perfect. He has all good qualities. One who is a devotee of Krishna will have all good qualities. One who is not a devotee, However, they're simply serving the senses. Now we may say, well, look, I'm a devotee, but I don't have very good qualities yet. Well, it takes some time. We have to practice. It's not immediate. Not just immediate. That you, just immediately you become a devotee, now you're perfect. It will take some time. We have to practice. We have to follow the principles. Follow the process, engage in the process. Coming to the temple, rising early in the morning, 
chanting, hearing, offering obeisances, doing our puja, reading the scriptures, doing menial service, menial seva here in the center, helping to cook and clean and cut and wash. This is all bhakti yoga. The more we do these things, the more we become purified and we can become also <coughs> perfect. So Prahlad Maharaj, he was already perfect. Saintly child. Prahlad Maharaj would also instruct his own class friends about the science of bhakti yoga. His class friends were surprised. They would, they would ask Prahlad, where did you get all of this knowledge from? How do you know this? Prahlad Maharaj explained to them that when he was still within the womb of his mother, at that time, his father had gone to do austerities. While Harani, I was explaining Harani Kashipu how he was doing austerities and how the ants ate all the flesh from his body, he said he performed austerities like that for a hundred years of the demigods. So for a very long time he was away from home. So during that time the demigods came to arrest the wife of Harani Kashipu because they knew that she has conceived, she has a child of the demon in her womb. So the demigods were very worried that this demon Harani Kashipu is giving us so much trouble, if he's going to have a son, it will be more trouble. So we should kill this child. Let's wait until this woman gives birth, and when she gives birth, we will kill the child. You see, although, they were deep, although the demigods were thinking like this, what do people do nowadays? You know, they don't wait for the child to be born, to, to be killed, you know. Immediately, the woman conceives, so immediately kill the child. This is demonic society. Anyway, the demigods, they said, we will wait till she delivers the child, then we will kill that child. Because we don't want another demon like Harani Kashipu. But Narada Muni happened to come there, and Narada Muni told them that you cannot do this. That this woman, who is the wife of Harani Kashipu, and the child in her womb, is a saintly person and you will not be able to kill this child anyway even if you think you want to do it you won't be able to harm this child because this child is a very pure soul. Narada Muni, he's Chikalakya, he knows everything past, present and future and he could understand that within the womb of this woman who is the wife of Arani Kashipu is a saintly child. Now the demigods were surprised. He's a big demon, but he's giving, going to give birth to a saintly child. Is it possible? And Narada Muni told it is certainly true that this child is very pure. So then the demigods, they all circumambulated this woman and they offered their respects because they knew, they heard that within her womb is a very pure devotee. So Narada Muni then took the lady to his ashram and while she was in the ashram she would serve Narada Muni. Just like the ladies, some, they come here, they also like to do some service, right? So Narada Muni, uh, this, this wife of Harani Kashipu, she was taken to the ashram of Narada Muni, she, she began to do seva. You know, ladies, they like to cook and to clean and to organize things. 
So she would help and serve Narada Muni. And Narada Muni, he would preach and he would read the Shastras aloud. And the, the woman would be hearing. But because she was a woman, you know, woman's nature, you know, they hear some things, they don't remember so much. Uh, anyway, her husband was away for a long time. She was waiting for her husband to come back. And it was a long time that by the time he came back, she'd forgotten everything. You know, if you wait a long time, you may hear, and if you, after some time you forget. You think, well, what was that? I heard that a long time ago. You don't remember, right? I mean, we can't remember last week what we heard. What to speak of what we heard years ago. You know, if we said, did you remember years ago that when the Bodhi was saying, did you, oh, no, no, we don't remember. Memories, right? We have poor memories, Kali Yuga memories. So, Harani Kashipu's wife, she was taken to the ashram of Narada Muni, and she was hearing from Narada Muni, but she didn't remember what she heard. But the child in the womb, he heard. Because this hearing process is not material. Even one may be within the womb without a developed physical body, but that soul can hear the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. So this is what happened to the child in the womb of Harani Kashipu's wife. This child, of course, becomes a saintly pralat. And he had been hearing from the Radhamani. So Narada Muni is his guru, and he remembers this, that although he was in the womb of his mother at the time, he heard, and he didn't forget, that he remained fixed in him. So he's a very wonderful devotee. And even today, even nowadays, you know, somebody has a son, oh, maybe as saintly as Prahlad. Right? The young boy, we give the name Prahlad. We think Prahlad. Let, let him be a devotee like Prahlad. Because Prahlad has such wonderful qualities. So in this way, uh, Prahlad Maharaj had very great qualities. Uh, he, was, he, he was, however, his father is a big demon. So his father wants to give him education. And for his education, he was put into Gurukula. That's the proper place for education. You go to the ashram of the Guru. However, Harani Kashipu's Guru was Sukracharya. And Sukracharya, about well, his, his sons, Sanda and Amarka, they're the teachers. So it's the Guru Kula for the demons. It's not really for Bhakti Yoga. It's the Guru Kula for the demons Prahlad has to go to. And in the demon Guru Kula, they don't learn about Bhakti Yoga. Rather, they learn about Dharma, Artha, and Kama. What are the goals of material life? Dharma is material religion. And material religiosity should lead to Artha, economic development. And from Artha, then we will have sense gratification, calm. So, this is a goal, this is a lifestyle, this is a thinking of the demons. I will be religious. Why? Because I want to get money, I want to enjoy, I want economic development, I want material prosperity. I want, I want, I want. 
This is the thinking of the materialistic people. So many endless desires. And with all these desires, they want Sanskrit. They, they, they're looking for sense gratification. And sense, the senses are never satisfied. They burn like fire. It is the lust which is causing us so many problems in this material world. So the demon, the, the Guru Kula of Sukracharya was like that, that the children were sent there from the demon families. And they were sent there at an early age to cultivate this material knowledge. And particularly they were trained in politics. Politicians like to deal with their enemies. They're very concerned. Who is my enemy? I will kill him. I will have him cut down. I will have him removed, right? Whoever is the opponent who will stand in my way will have him destroyed. This is a demonic mentality. Politics is all about that. Somebody is your enemy, you have to say bad things about them. In the beginning, you can try, you know, maybe try to make some friendship with them. Maybe you can offer them some position. You could be a partner. We will have a coalition party, right? You can join with my party. We will work together. So this kind of thing goes on in politics. But if that doesn't work, then you may have to put them in jail or you have to find some way to get them into trouble. So the, the Guru Kula, the students were learning all of this how to deal with the enemy. Prahlad Maharaj, however, he's a saintly person. He doesn't have any enemy. It's the nature of the topmost devotee that they see everyone is engaged in Krishna's service. They, don't, they do not see someone as a friend and someone as an enemy. So Prahlad Maharaj was always encouraging them the other demons, you know, see everyone equally, don't make distinction. Of course, for preaching, for preaching we make distinctions. Just like one time Srila Prabhupada was in uh, one temple, so one man got very upset because he heard Prabhupada, you know, talking that rascal, the, these people, and this is the demon, and this, you know, I mean, Prabhupada sometimes could preach very strongly, very heavily, criticizing the materialistic society. And one man got quite upset, and he said, why do you criticize so many people? He said, you should see everyone equal. But Prabhupada said, I am not on that platform. Prabhupada said to him, the man was saying, you should see everyone equally. He said, you should be like Prahlad Maharaj. You know, Prahlad Maharaj, he sees everyone. <coughs> but Prabhupada said, oh, I'm sorry, I am not on that platform. <laughs> I have to see differences. No, for, for preaching. So the, the, the man was like, you know, oh, you know. <laughs> but, but then the devotees were explaining to this man, they explained to him that actually Srila Prabhupada is preaching the message of Bhagavad Gita all over the world. So when the man heard this, then he understood, oh, this is real equality, that he is giving the benefit of this knowledge to everyone. So while Prabhupada was pointing out faults and errors and so on in the materialistic society, at the same time he gave everyone the chance to become Krishna conscious. So that is real equality, when you give Krishna consciousness to everyone without distinction. You don't consider who's qualified and who's not. And indeed it's the nature of bhakti yoga, that bhakti yoga 
is for every, anyone and everyone. They can become a devotee of the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, uh, uh, Striyo Vaishas Tadasudras Tepi Yanti Bhagparangati Mahi Parta Vai Pashrajya Yepi Shu Papa Yonaya Striyo Vaishas Tadasudras Tepi Yanti Parangati Those who are addicted to sinful acts, even one may be a, a Papa Yoni, a sinful person, but he can become saintly. He can achieve the supreme destination. Even one is of low birth. Women, Sudra, Vaishya, they can all attain the supreme destination. And Sukadeva Goswami says the same thing in Srimad Bhagavata. Kirita, Hunandra, Pulinda, Pokesha, Abhira, Shumba, Yavana, Kashadaya, Yanye, Chapapa, Yadapashraya, Shraya, Sujanti Tasmai Prabhavishnave Namaha. Sukadeva Goswami is listing different sinful races, sinful sects. He said they can all become Krishna conscious, they can all be delivered by the mercy of the devotees. So Prahlad Maharaj, he is, of course, he, he wasn't really preaching, so therefore he saw everybody eat. But when you preach, like Prabhupada was preaching, then you make some distinction. Because in order to preach, the Uttama comes down to the Madhyam level. <coughs> and on the Madhyam platform, you make distinction. You see, the, you see the Lord, and we offer our worship to the Lord. There are the devotees, we make friends with the devotees. There are the innocent people, we give mercy to them. And there are the atheists and the blasphemers, we avoid them. Very simple. Because you're preaching, you want to preach. So don't waste time with the, in, with the blasphemers and the atheists who are no interest. Give mercy to those who want it, who want to hear, who are innocent. Prahlad Maharaj had that nature, giving Krishna consciousness to where he found the innocent. Sometimes he would preach. We will we'll talk tomorrow about how Prahlad Maharaj was preaching. Okay, are there any questions? Is Prahlada is also any Puro Janma pastime anywhere in the world? Is what? Uh, <coughs> does Prahlada also has got any earlier Janma's pastimes or sadhana or something like or Before? Like? Does he have any previous pastime? Well, there is some Puranic story which says that he was a, a Brahmana, he was a fallen Brahmana and he had a girlfriend and they argued one night and they they sp he spent the whole night fasting, and it was the Nishringa Chaturna Singh. Viva! <laughs> There's a story like that. I didn't see it in Prabhupada's book, so. But we talk about Prahlad as being Nitya Siddha. Let's mention Prabhupada. that he is interested to hear repeatedly Prahlad. What, what was the message which we can take from there? Well, yeah. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to give Braja Bhakti, but <laughs> he also wants to give us Sadhana Bhakti. To come to Braja Bhakti, you know, you, have, you can't just immediately come to Braja Bhakti. You know, there was one of his devotees who was going to Vrindavan. He told him, you be careful, the bridge Basi people, you're not on their level. Don't associate with them. You're not on their level. So, Brajabhakti is 
a very, very elevated, very high thing. We, we need to have sadhana bhakti to come to that. So, from Dhruva and Prahlad Maharaj, we're seeing the example, we're seeing the determination, the tolerance, we're seeing all the saintly qualities which are required for practice of devotional service. That's what I think. From these pastimes of Dhruva and Prahlad Maharaj, we see that example. We can understand also that we also want to develop and perfect our own practice of bhakti yoga. We have to cultivate these kind of qualities. We have to cultivate the tolerance, the determination, the patience. the demons were digging in the earth for gold and the earth fell down on the orbit. Yes. Uh, uh, now in today's world, particularly in Middle East everywhere, we are digging a lot of holes. Yes. So Prabhupada mentions about that. He said we should be very careful. We could cause also some instability in the earth planet by all the drilling and all the things we are doing. We have to be very careful. In this material world, uh, we hear that the karmic reaction is there from uh, for the uh, abominable actions. Uh, was there any uh, reaction which is been specified for Indra who went into the womb of uh, Titi and then chopped the embryos? Well, I never heard anything, but I remember he 
chopped their wound, they chopped the embryo and said, but they, they didn't kill them, right? They're, they remained alive. They're all the brothers. Yeah, they kind of worked yeah. So, you know, you could say this was a service he was doing. <laughs> not that, not, not something sinful. It didn't do any harm to him. It was a, a service. <laughs> so you do service, you should get rewarded, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Jai. We are so fortunate to have association of Ms. Ms. Maharaj. Maybe the prophet of Maharaj. Maharaj was initiated by Srila Prabhupada in London in 1971. Ariva. A year later, Maharaj received second initiation. Ariva. Maharaj has been preaching for over the last 25 years.